In this video, I use a softbox to create a retro style image in a small home studio. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today I'm back inside my small studio to do a shoot using a softbox. Now in my last video, you'd have seen me use this thing, the umbrella, and it's a question that crops up a lot. Should I use an umbrella or a softbox? Well, let me start off by saying, in my opinion, it's not one or the other. They both have their uses. Thing I love about umbrellas, if you use them as a shoot through umbrella, you get beautiful soft lighting. If you use them as a reflective umbrella, you can control the lighting much better and give it more direction. Thing is, I can do both of those with one softbox. That's why I love using it in a studio, particularly a small one like this. Now you'll notice I've been busy with the paintbrush. I've done a little bit of a, a paint job, temporary on the wall. So let's set up our shoot and take some pictures. So I've set up my light and just to give you an idea what it is, this is the Westcott Apollo Orb softbox. Hidden inside is my Flashpoint Streaklight 360 from Adorama. And that's what we're gonna use. It's a bare bulb light, which means that I bounce the light around beautifully inside the softbox to create some soft but dramatic lighting. So of course we need a model and I'm gonna bring in Freya. Freya, do you wanna come back in? So you might remember Freya, she was in episode one of our small home studio mini series. And as you can see, she's got a, a different look on. We're gonna go for a nice kind of retro vintage look. We've got a few retro ideas to try out in a minute, but first we need to set the lights. Now, one of the great things about softboxes is their direction of light you can use. So let's try a couple of different directions and see what look we get. Let's start by putting the light pretty close to the background, something like that. Now I'm going for a target aperture of f11, just to give me the, the depth of field I'm after in this picture. Now I have no idea what it's gonna be at the moment, so I've got a light meter and we'll take a test meter reading, I'm getting f14. Now one of the nice things about using the, the streak light is I can change the power here on the little remote rather than diving into the softbox. So if I want f11, that's two thirds of a stop less. That's two clicks, let's try again. F11, perfect. Okay, so I've got my F11 aperture. Let's take a shot, see how this looks. And as we can see, what we end up with is a picture that's pretty contrasty. The direction of light is strong. We've got a lot of texture on the background, but the lighting on Freya is a bit harsh. It's bright one side, very dark the other. So let's see if we can get this light a bit softer and a bit more even. And the easiest way to do that, of course, is just to move the position of the light so it's not at an angle, but it's almost shooting straight towards Freya, just like that. So from this angle, we're gonna get a very different look. But of course, moving the light means I might have changed the exposure. The exposure will change when the distance between the subject and the light alters. And I think it has slightly, let's just take a test reading. So yeah, I'm getting F8, so I need another stop of light. That's three presses. Okay, and we'll go to F11, back to F11 again. Perfect. Okay, let's take the shot. So this time what we've got is really, really flat lighting. It actually works quite well for this picture, but it lacks a little bit of drama of the other shot. What I want is of course, something in between, not flat, not quite so contrasty. How do I get that? I'll put the light somewhere in the middle. Okay, so not straight on, not so angular. There we go. Probably around about there, that looks pretty good. Again, I've moved the light. Let's take another meter reading. F14, so I can just drop this down two thirds of a stop. Take the same test shot just to be sure. Back to F11 again. Okay. And here we go. Yep, there we go. So that gives me a nice amount of contrast and a little bit of a shadow behind Freya. And I actually, I quite like that shadow. I reckon we can do something with that in Photoshop. So that's the light set. 
Let's get a few props in and start doing the shoot. So there we go, we've got some great little shots there with our kind of retro vintage themed shoot and our vintage cameras. Freya's done a fantastic job, but what I need to do now is to get the best picture into Photoshop and we're gonna do some editing and we'll do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. So before I jump into Photoshop, this is a video that's a little bit interactive because if you have a go at reproducing the photography bit or the Photoshop bit or both, we want to see the results. Take them over to the Adorama Facebook page, upload them there and let's see what you can do with the ideas from this video. I'll pop over as well and I'll add some comments too. So let's jump into Photoshop. Now I shoot everything in RAW, so we could do this in Lightroom, we could do it in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CC. And really what I want to do is to give this picture a feeling of age, of being slightly retro, and just a few little tweaks will give that look. Now, part of it comes down to the photography with this nice uh, warm colored background and the clothing and the styling and so on, but part of it's in the post-processing. Now, the first thing I'm going to change is the clarity. And if you know me, you know I love increasing clarity for that contrasty look, but not for this picture. For this picture, I want a dreamy softness. Now I could take the clarity down quite low, but that's maybe a little bit too far. I'm actually gonna bring it down to about minus 30, give or take, something like that. Now to add to that glowing effect, I'm gonna do a couple of tricks and they all re revolve around the highlights and brightness of the picture. So I'll take the exposure and increase it by about half a stop thereabouts. And I'm gonna take the highlights and I'll just push them a little bit brighter and I'll take the whites and do the same there as well. And that's probably just a little bit too bright, it's just a little bit burnt out, but that's exactly that retro feeling effect that I want to achieve. Now, remember I was talking about the shadow in the photography part of things, and we, we played around with the different positions of the light to get different shadow looks. Well, if I had two lights, I could deal with the shadows in camera, but we're gonna do that in a later video. So for now, to deal with the shadows, I'm gonna come over to the shadow slider and I'm just gonna increase it just so I slightly brighten the shadows like so. The colors in this picture are lovely, lovely sort of warmish tones. I'm actually gonna take the warm tone slightly further by increasing the temperature just a little bit and that adds a nice sort of creamy feel to the picture. And to really make sure that comes over nicely, I'm gonna change the vibrance. I'm actually gonna decrease it a little bit. Vibrance I normally use to, to punch colors up, but you can also use it to mute colors down. And depending on how low you put your slider, you'll get a very different look. And in this case, I probably wanna be sort of mid thirties, something like that. So that gives my, my picture the nice kind of retro feel that I was after. But there's one part of the picture I still need to work on, and that's the legs. Because with a single smallish soft box, the legs are a little bit darker than the face, which is of course where we metered for. So to deal with that area, I'm just gonna get the zoom tool and we'll go a little bit closer over the legs and I'm gonna use the adjustment brush. Now with the adjustment brush, what I'm gonna do is increase the exposure a little bit on the legs, maybe half a stop. And also I'll bring up the shadows so we open them up and also pull down the saturation so they don't become too colorful. I'm also gonna come down to the bottom here and turn on auto mask. Now this is a bit of an odd one because normally I would have that switched off because it does some, some weird stuff as we'll see. But in this case, I need to just affect the legs and if I have auto mask turned on, I can put my brush outside of the legs and the effect is, I would say not happening, but it is reducing the effect, let's put it that way. And we'll deal with the, the, the aftermath in a second because you can see the, the downside of auto mask is this sort of speckling effect. So to deal with that, I'm gonna to jump to the erase option 
I'll turn off auto mask and using a nice small brush with a nice harder edge. Let's bring that size down a little bit. I'm just going to erase that back to the original picture like so. The more time you spend here, the neater this will be. But for now, we're just going to kind of do it reasonably quickly, something like that. And that should just give me a nice soft finish, but lighten those legs a little bit. And we can even possibly just push the exposure up just a tiny little bit more and pull down the saturation. There we go. So let's fit that onto the screen. There we are. So have a look at these two pictures side by side. The picture that I shot straight out of the camera was pretty good, but my editing just gives it that nice vintage or retro feel. And that's the final picture completed. So the only thing left for me to do now is just to uh, give my background a, a fresh coat of paint for the next video. Speaking of which, if you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.